the golden rule of web design. I bet you think it's going to be something superficial like treat other websites the way you want yours to be treated or some bullshit like that. But that's not the case here, my friend. I'm here to share with you what I think to be the actual golden rule of web design and what I think you should keep in mind every single time you build a website. Listen, there's a ton of things that go into building websites like colors, typography, images, videos, text, layout, graphic design, stylization. Ah. I get it. There's so many things that go into building a website and it's difficult to say that there's one golden rule, but here it is anyways, purpose. That's it. Sticking to the purpose of what you're trying to convey or what you're trying to give your web visitors is the golden rule of web design. What I'm trying to get you to understand here is that you need to constantly be asking yourself what the purpose is of the website and if the element that you're adding or whatever it is fits into that purpose or serves in the grand scheme of things. Let's brainstorm here just for a little bit and throw all of the purposes or reasons that we can think of for building a site. And let's throw them up on the board. Let's assume that there's four different types of websites that you could be building. You could be making an e-commerce website or a landing page for a specific product or service. You could be making a business site or like a freelancer website. You can make a blog or like a news article type of website, or you could be making a personal portfolio for someone or yourself, of course. If you're gonna be building an e-commerce website or a landing page for a specific product, Product, the narrative of this website would be product focused or niche focused. If you've got an e-commerce store that sells bike parts, for example, then essentially you're focused on the niche for selling bike parts. Maybe there's a new massage gun out there that you're trying to sell on your website, so you need to build a landing page. Either way, the focus of these websites is to sell that product or products. You're gonna show off the specs for the product, maybe show some reviews for social proof, and potentially a video tutorial as well, or maybe even a promotional video. So let's throw some narratives up onto the board for the e-commerce website. So if it's e-commerce or a landing page, it's gonna be product focused. You want to show them that the product fixes their problem, and you want to show them that they need to buy this product. And and you may also want to be the one-stop shop for everything in that niche if you're an e-commerce store. All right, so now that we have the narrative for the e-commerce website, let's try the business or the freelance website. Now, what's the goal of one of those sites? You're basically trying to what? Show off the business maybe. You want to drive traffic to your mode of contact, whether that be a contact form or email subscription or appointment scheduler built into the site. It doesn't really matter. You just want them to get in contact with you. Now, you're also going to definitely want to show who you are, what you do, and how you do it. Probably in the form of like an about section, then a services section, and a social proof section. And if you're a successful business or a freelancer, you're probably gonna wanna show off your completed projects in the form of a portfolio or a gallery. And lastly, the whole point of the website, again, is to get in contact with you so that they work with you. You actually want them to feel like they can trust you and use you eventually. Okay, so that's the business or freelance narrative. So let's try the personal blog. If you're gonna be building a blog website or like a news site, your goal is going to be to educate people. Whether you're just talking about the news or a specific niche, or you'd rather have helpful articles and tutorials or something like that, the main goal that you want your website to achieve is to help other people with their problems. Something else to keep in mind in the narrative of building a blog website is making sure that out of the plethora of articles that you're gonna have on your website, that it's really easy to find one specific article. So another narrative could be content organization. Maybe this means implementing something like categories on your site, whatever that may be. And lastly, if you're a blogger, content is king here. So you wanna make sure that your content is your priority. After the blog, we finally have the personal portfolio. And what would be the point of having said portfolio? Well, I feel like it's pretty obvious, but the goal is to display your work. Maybe you're a graphic designer or an artist that wants to show off a specific style of graphic design that you're specialized in or whatever art you do. This way, people can get a feel for what to expect when they work from you when it comes to different styles of art. Your main call to action is gonna be for them to use your services. So you're gonna wanna show them on your portfolio what you do, how you do it, and how you'll actually fix the problem. And then finally, tell them to work with you. Also important on a portfolio is gonna be the gallery where you actually show off whatever custom work or freelance projects that you're doing so that they know what to expect from you. All right, so now that we have the narrative of whatever site you might be trying to build, we can use that narrative or purpose to determine everything about the website. Let's start with the structure, but you'll use the purpose to make a decision on everything from colors to typography, which elements or widgets you're gonna use, the text that you're gonna be putting on the website, everything. Once you know your main goal, you can start plotting a path towards that goal in the form of a structure or layout for your website. You want people to read from left to right, top to bottom, all the way down. The information you want it to flow in one direction as an easy to understand narrative. 
all the way down your website. So as we think of these structures of our website in accordance with the narrative we just thought out, you can decide what needs to be on your website and what doesn't. If you're an e-commerce website that's selling massage guns or you're building a landing page for that single product, there's probably little need for an about section on the landing page. People aren't on your store shopping for a massage gun and wanting to learn more about you. They're just wanting to learn more about the massage gun and its quality and if it'll fix their problem. Do you guys see what I'm getting at here? If you've determined that the goal of your website is to show off a product, and then specify that it fixes their problem and then sell the product, then you can get rid of a lot of clutter and streamline your website towards that one goal. So let's talk about an e-commerce website or a landing page. What would that structure look like for that kind of website, keeping in mind the narrative that we just discussed earlier? Well, a good structure in my opinion would be to start with a value proposition at the top of the website. And basically a value proposition is just a statement that answers the why should I do business with you question. If you're looking for a great value proposition example, you can just take a look at Shopify's homepage. It's a great example of what a great value proposition looks like. In two short sentences or phrases, it just tells people what you are and what you do. Okay, so after the value proposition, I would go straight into a call to action, whether that be an email subscription or a banner that tells people that you have a sale on a certain product with a button that takes them to that product whatever the case may be. You can get creative with your own call to action, but I would put that call to action second on your website. Next, I would show some social proof in the form of testimonials or something like that. After that, I would show a gallery of the product in use, whether that be pictures or videos. And then next, I would show off the benefits of that product. How is this product gonna solve their problems specifically? And then right after the benefits, I hit them with some more social proof. I'm Batman. And then last on the website, we're gonna add the FAQs and then the closing call to action. Basically at the bottom of the website, if they made it all the way down there, you wanna remind them to buy something. Do you see how we take the narrative of showing off the product, selling the product, and then use that purpose to navigate and narrate the structure of the entire website. Let's do the business site next. I would again start with a value proposition, stating what your company does and how they do it. And then I would hit them with some social proof right off the bat, whether that be testimonials or some stylish banner that shows off logos of companies that you've worked with, anything. Next, I would have a services section so that people know what services your business provides. And then after that, Hit them with some social proof again, essentially closing the social proof sandwich. Maybe this time it could be something like testimonials if you did logos up above. Then I would have an about me snippet, then a gallery if applicable to your business, and then at the bottom, a contact form for them to talk to you. Basically for the business site, I want people to know who I am and what I do. And then I wanna tell them the services that I provide. And then I wanna tell them that those services fix other people's similar problems. And then I'm gonna show them how I did it with the gallery that I talked about and then I'm gonna ask them to contact me at the very end. Do you see that? It's all one narrative that's driven and flows down the website. Okay, so if you're a blogger, you might wanna start with the name or business name and then use a title and then a short description so that they know what your blog is about. Here's an example on screen. After that, you could include maybe a social proof section and then maybe the latest article section, maybe some categories, and then you can hit them with the call to action, which would probably be an email subscription. And at the very bottom, I would have a contact section. Now for the portfolio site, it would be pretty similar to the business site and the blog meshed together. I would start with my name, title, and short description, followed by an about me snippet to tell them who I am. Then I would segue into the services and then the main portfolio, which shows all of my work experience and completed projects. And then at the very bottom, I would have my social proof and a contact form. Now, remember at the end of the day that nothing is set in stone here. These are great templates to stick to, but every business is different and might need more or less than what I'm showing you here today. I just wanna get you guys thinking in the the right direction when you're starting to build your site or modifying your current site. Stick to your narrative and focus your content so that it flows down appropriately. The most important thing for your website to accomplish is for your website visitors to feel like they found the solution to whatever problem they came searching for. Keep it clean and simple and stay focused on the purpose of your website. So whether you're modifying your current site or building a new one, I hope that you're gonna pay attention to the main purpose of the site and keep that in mind throughout the building process. Now, if you haven't built your website yet, but you're looking to get started click on the video in the top left corner for a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a website from start to finish for the cheapest price possible. And if you already have a website up and running, but you think it's a bit outdated or boring, click on the video in the top right corner where I teach you guys exactly how to fix that. I'll see you in the next video.